Let's take a minute here to just fathom the fact that this laptop here cost $10,000. What's going on guys, my name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who have joined and subscribed recently, thank you so much. We're almost at 100, which isn't a lot, but to me it's fantastic news. Now, straight off the bat, if you think I'm crazy enough to spend $10,000 on a laptop, well, you don't really know me well enough because this laptop here is your base level MacBook Pro 2019 model. However, we're gonna be using this laptop here to compare it to the top of the range $10,000 Apple MacBook Pro. If you already own the 2016, 2017, or maybe even the 2018 MacBook Pro, and are looking just to upgrade to the base model 2019 one, there's probably no point for you to go out and waste the extra money. If you're looking at buying the $10,000 one, stick around to see if you actually need it for your day-to-day -day lifestyle. So what would warrant somebody to go out and spend $10,000 on a laptop versus two to $3,000 on the base model? What are really these core differences and what are the differences in their day-to-day -day lifestyle that's gonna make them need to spend this much money? Well, if you're some sort of video editor, a game developer, or anything that's using a lot of RAM and a lot of power, you're gonna need this type of laptop at hand all the time. If you're editing something like 8K or 4K RAW files, then maybe you're gonna need the speed and the power of this laptop but unless you're editing 8K RAW files, and even still then, you probably won't need four terabytes of space to be able to justify a $10,000 price tag. If you cut out the four terabyte storage, you immediately drop off about $4,000 from the price tag, which is halving the laptop price instantly. So for most people, and for myself personally, four terabytes is an excessive amount of data that you don't need to be storing on a mobile device. In reality, if you're watching this YouTube video today, then chances are you're probably not gonna go out and spend $10,000 on a laptop, but you're pretty curious to find out what the differences are between the two grand, three grand option and the 10 grand option. Chances are that you're something along the lines of a university student, maybe an entrepreneur or even an Instagram influencer in 2019 looking to step into a new laptop, which is why I've made this video here for you guys today. I don't want anybody going out there and spending $10,000 of their hard earned money on something that they don't need or something that they don't really know and don't understand what the real purposes of that laptop are. It doesn't matter if you have all the money in the world, you don't really need to go out and spend 10 grand on a laptop if you aren't processing well 8K video files or need to store terabytes and terabytes of data on your laptop at all times for, I don't know, some major security reason. All right, so let's talk about the features of the i9 MacBook Pro. Inside the i9, you're gonna find a 15 inch screen with a 2.9 gigahertz, six core, eighth generation Intel i9 chip, along with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. The DDR4 RAM compared to the previous model, which was a DDR3 RAM, is gonna drain your battery a little bit quicker, but Apple has compensated for that by increasing the battery life just that little bit. One of the benefits of the i9 is you're gonna find a dedicated graphics card, which a lot of the MacBooks don't have, including the one that I'm gonna to recommend to you guys in a minute. The graphics card supplied with this one is the Radon Pro 4 gigabytes graphics card. And the reason this laptop is so expensive is the fact that it has a four terabyte solid state hard drive installed. Now this $10,000 laptop is definitely not something I'd recommend if you're just a general everyday user. Even if you're a YouTuber looking to process 4K files that aren't raw files, you're probably gonna be able to get away with something a little bit less dearer. What I would recommend on the other hand, if you're still looking at an Apple product, is Apple's 2019 i7 13 inch display alternative. To be able to keep up with the ever-growing file sizes, RAM processing power, and everything to be an entrepreneur in 2019, you're probably gonna need something along the lines of a 16 gig RAM, 256 gigabytes of memory, and if you really need it, you can add an extra graphics card for an additional $500 on the 15 inch version. Now the reason I recommend 256 gigabytes of memory on this MacBook Pro is the fact that you're gonna to need to install a few programs along the way. This is gonna take up a lot of your space, but realistically what you're gonna be doing is keeping most of your files on the cloud in some sort of cloud storage solution. Be it Apple's cloud or Google Drive or Dropbox, any of these solutions are great, but it means taking off all that data off your computer and never having to worry about it taking up all your space. Now there are a couple of housekeeping points I wanna bring up about both of these laptops and really any 2019 MacBook Pro if you go out and buy one. Then the new MacBooks have a feature called True Tone Display, which constantly continues to adjust the brightness and the Calvins 
of the screen to adjust to your ambient situation. Now if you're editing a photo which needs a perfectly white background and you're editing in a dark room, chances are somebody else looking at it in a very bright room on a non-true tone display is going to see it as a little bit yellow. Another feature that comes in the 2019 laptops is something that's highly anticipated by a lot of people and that's the Hey Siri feature. In my personal opinion, this isn't a feature that's been really improved on or upgraded enough to warrant it being turned on all the time. Having that microphone listen to your conversations and also just allowing the laptop to be using that battery in the background even if it's ever so slightly. Now if for some reason you're still convinced that you want to go out and buy this $10,000 i9 MacBook Pro, well there is something you need to be a little bit cautious about. Because of the fact that it has so much stored into this tiny unibody and that heat being an Apple product isn't forced out by the fans loud enough. Apple likes to make sure that their laptops are sleek, stylish and quiet, which I mean is fantastic. But if you're running an i9 machine and pumping out all this programming processing power, your laptop's going to turn into a little hotbox. And some people have been going to drastic measures, putting it in their fridge, putting it in their freezer, just trying to make sure it cools down. So if you do go out and buy the Apple i9 $10,000 version laptop, well, make sure that you're always keeping an eye on the thermal performance of the laptop because this hasn't been fixed by Apple at all. A simple analogy, I guess, is if you're in the market today for a new TV, you've probably seen the fact that an 8K Sony TV costs $80,000. Well, I remember back in the day when a plasma TV came out for the first time and they were like $50,000, $60,000. Now, you can pick up a plasma or an LCD or anything like that for under a grand. Why? Because it isn't the latest and greatest technology and it's becoming more readily available throughout the whole world. That's the same that's going to happen with this i9 MacBook. If you're able to wait a year, you're probably going to get it for 50% of the price. If you're able to wait two years, you're going to get it for even less. And then if you can wait for five years, you're going to get it for about a fraction. So if you can wait a few years and go out and buy this i9 laptop for a couple thousand dollars versus ten thousand dollars, well, I mean, I'm no financial guru, but that's a great saving straight away. And there you have it, guys. I'm trying to make this video short and sweet. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that subscribe button 2019 style and I'll see you next Monday.